Welcome to another episode of this stupid podcast. Um, a ramble about my election prediction predictions. Um, I think Trump's gonna win. To be perfectly honest with you, I. This is my personal opinion. He really is the lesser of the two evils. And it's not that... When you say anybody would be better than Donald Trump, that's not actually true. Joe Biden is clearly in a mental decline. And I think that's why they kept him packed away during the election. And, uh, I mean, I, I think... I just... It's just, I, I'm getting the same feeling that I got in 2016. 2016, I voted for Gary Johnson. But when you look at the rallies, um, if there's something you notice, and this could just be trickery, but I don't understand why you wouldn't do it. It doesn't seem to be a lot of people in the audience for Biden. And there seems to be a lot of people in the audience for Trump. And the only thing that they can say is that these are super spreader events. Um, I, I just think that it's... Okay, first off, here's my prediction. This election is going to be contested any way you look at it. And it's going to get ugly. Like, you know, I, I personally don't get why people can't just accept other people voting differently than them or trying to actually understand the reasons behind why somebody is voting for a candidate. Cause it's, you know, I'm in a, I, I, I clown around. I get into Twitter wars with people. I'm in one currently. And <clears throat> the only thing that this woman can say to me on Twitter, every time I bring up something like, Biden was a part of an administration that bombed Libya into a failed state. That's racist. That's where we're at. We're at this, the ad hominem attack portion where nobody wants to actually listen to the other person. And it, it sums up, this is another reason why I think Trump is going to win. It's kind of a, Screw you to the people on the left. I know there's a lot of, lot of moderate left-wing people out there. I haven't met them, but I'm sure they're out there that are tolerant of other people's views. But the left in this country has gotten so intolerant of how other people view the world that any dissenting, any dissenting ne Anything, any dissent from the narrative with which they which which they want to craft, you become an evil bigot. And and it's like it's like okay, there's only so much of that I'm gonna tolerate in my life of me being on the fence, and then you coming back at me. I, I, I mean, part of the reason I'm voting for Trump is honestly just to screw you. To the left wing party, they can't even. That's gotten to the point where they can't even accept that I'm an independent, and that I would prefer to vote third party. Yeah, people on the right will say to me, they're like, "Dude, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, I don't think it's a good idea, man, because you know, look, what's the odds of the third party winning? Well, the odds would be pretty good if we all just acknowledge that we only have two turd sandwiches sitting on the counter right now. And we went right down the middle with a nope, nope. Here's a, here's a independent. We voted them in. It's a screw you to the established parties. I also think Donald Trump is somewhat of a screw you to the establishment where people are like, we're tired of this. We want something different. Let's vote for this reality TV star. And, but it's, it's, it's gotten so divisive in this country 
that me as even a person that prefers to vote third party, I get attacked by left-leaning people. They'll say things to me like this. Well, if you're voting third party, you're really just giving a vote for Donald Trump. And I go, no, that's not how that works. It's not at all. It's not at all how that works. I, uh, I vote, you asked me my opinion, who should be president. I gave you the answer. You don't like that. Now, you know, go screw. But it's gotten to the point now where a lot of the people on the left have become so radicalized that they can't even accept if you're apolitical or a third party person. You're just... You're just as bad as the people that voted Donald Trump in. If you're if you're sitting out on the sidelines and you're not taking action against this intrinsic threat to the rest of the world, humanity in the universe. Donald Trump gets in office, reality breaks. There's a there's a there's a the the United, the world turns into a, a singularity and we're all sucked into a black hole. If you vote for Donald Trump, that's what happens. If you don't vote for Joe Biden, that's what happens. You know, it's it's gotten to literally that level of ridiculousness that an apolitical person is now attacked for not denouncing Trump. An apolitical person is sitting there going, look, man, I'm not really into politics. I don't really understand what the difference between the two parties are because, you know, historically they vote lockstep on nearly every issue, including wars and screwing over the public. And really, the only difference that it makes in your life is that, you know, you get to sit in your echo chamber with a smug sense of satisfaction that you get to push your lifestyle and your rules on the rest of the populace for four years now. See, we told you that Trump was bad. Now we've got Joe Biden in there. Oh, look how great my life is. Even though I'm married to the same person, I got the same job, um, I live in the same shithole apartment, I'm still paying off my student debt, but everything's just hunky-dory because there's a senile guy in office and it's really just, it was really just about my uh, moral, my, my moral high horse, that I'm better than you, that I needed to, I needed to push my liberalism on you for four years. It's like, what's the matter, Jay? Like, are you getting pissed at me because you don't support the government stripping people of their second amendment rights? Well, you're a bigot, <laughs> you know, you don't support trans women competing with biological women, you're a bigot. Uh, I mean, it's gotten to the point now where the left is so far gone and delusional that Martina Navratilova, which is a gay woman, gay biological woman, who had a trans coach in the 1980s before all this became vogue, is a bigot. Because she said that she doesn't think that uh, transgender women should be allowed to play against biological women. And you can go screw biological women. And you can go screw yourself with the cis term. Okay? I, I'm not... I just decided I'm not doing made up words. With me, you get him or her. Uh, uh, a female is a biological female or a, bio, or a transgendered female. I'm not judging you. I, I don't. I don't. I, I am. See, this is the thing. A lot of these liberals, as a guy who leans, I, got, I don't know. I get told that I'm center left. I get told that I'm center right. I really just hate the labels. But I guarantee you, I'm actually more liberal on a lot of subjects than the left is. It's weird how that works, right? It's, you know, I, I independent, third party, I lean conservative on a few issues. Second Amendment, fiscal conservative, limited, go, limited government. Uh, that, those are the, 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 the main things that I'm into. Other than that, 
I really don't care if a transgender woman wants to compete against a biological biologic woman and they want to have a tennis match and they agree to it, I'm for it. If you want to be a transgender person, I'm for it. I'm not going to judge you. I'll sit down, have drinks with you, have some laughs, you know, hang out. You can come to my parties. It doesn't bother me. Who you are is who you are. Come as you are, as Nirvana would say. You don't have to put on a show for me and pretend to be something that you're not. You don't have to toe the liberal line. Or if you're a really liberal person, as long as you're respectful with your beliefs and you're not trying to push them on me, I'm not judging you for that either. Like, you know, if you think that a transgender woman is a has always been a woman, I'm going to make fun of you, but you're going to have to get some level of sense of humor. The left doesn't have a sense of humor anymore. They even It's infiltrated comedy in the Tampa Bay area. And so I, I, I go out and, well, that, this, this joke I did went over well where I said, I'm a, if you think coming out as gay is hard, try coming out as a socially liberal, fiscal conservative, Second Amendment supporting independent voter. You just piss everybody off. But, I mean, it's, the, the, the left has gotten so bad in this country that now all I'm, half the time, all I hear out of comedians around here is fucking woke bullshit comedy. You know, I'm up there talking about molesting myself as a child, just saying inappropriate shit and having a good time. Because that's my sense of humor. And it, it's like, it's turned into comedy around here. has turned into a bunch of people standing up there lecturing you on how you should feel about a certain subject. And how it's unacceptable if you feel differently than, than they do. I mean, it's gotten so bad in this country that a guy like Chris Pratt, who seems to be an all-around awesome dude, and even the libs had to rush to his defense. He doesn't agree with voting for Biden, but he's got to keep that to himself. Matthew McConaughey talked about this on the latest Rogan podcast. And now Chris Pratt, they want to cancel Chris Pratt because he's a conservative and a Christian. I mean... So you're not even allowed to have religious views. Oh, but don't get me wrong. If I uh, create a cartoon showing the prophet Muhammad, then <clears throat> Hollywood will jump down my throat and they'll start accusing me of Islamophobia. That's how that works. Because that, that, that's what's in vogue. And it's much like a spring. You can only push people and try and force your ideology on them so far in a free society before that spring snaps back. And they're like, listen, motherfucker, you're not going to tell me how to vote. You're not going to tell me how to feel about an issue. Because it's my, my uncle John, I shouldn't say his name. One of my uncles, he is a homosexual man, which more power to him. He's pimping. He's got this young stud, actually younger than me, uh, foreign dude, handsome man. My, my uncle's killing it. And I, he hasn't seen me since I was a baby. And it's even creeped in. The liberalism has gotten like this. My other uncle, his brother, had to get off of Facebook because of him. Now, for some reason, he thinks he's going to push his, his progressive ideas on me. So he, he, he I, I joked around about getting a Colt 1911. He starts getting me on Facebook about why I need a gun. And I'm just like, Uncle John, I don't need to explain to you why I need a gun. Okay? I don't, see, this is the mischaracter, this is the, the mistake that a lot of liberal people and a lot of people arguing, prohibitionists, that's how it goes on both sides. They think that I need to make a case to them on why I need to do something. I'm like, you have no authority. You as the individual person, I don't owe you an explanation 
for anything that I do if it's not hurting you. If I want to own a farm. Again, he's trying to push his liberal bias on me. And, uh, you know, another one. I put vote uh, President Camacho from the movie Idiocracy. Because it is my firm belief that this would be a better presidential election if Terry Crews just ran as President Camacho and just stayed in character for eight years. I would, I would vote for that in a heartbeat over what is going on now. But he goes, ah, vote Biden. Like, dude, fuck all the way off. Off you must fuck. Like, you, you, you can't even take a simple joke. You know, I'm going to vote for who I want to vote for. But he's sitting there telling friends and family that he wants to unfriend them if they vote for Trump. And here's the thing. You're not going to bully me into voting for Joe Biden. Joe Biden is objectively a bad choice. He's bought and paid for. He is standard operating procedure in Washington, D.C. He's been embedded in the culture for 47 years. Okay? This guy is po Washington politics. Is He is the shining example of it. So don't come at me and start telling me that, yeah, well, look, okay, uh, I'm just going to put it this way because you seem to be kind of on the fence. Um, um, if you don't vote how I want you to vote, I'm not going to be your friend anymore and I'll cut you off. Okay, well, let me tell you about me. And I think a lot of Americans are like this. You'll tolerate that. I'll tolerate that for a little bit. And then I'll look at somebody and say, listen, dude, you're not going to hold our friendship hostage or family relationship hostage while you tell me how I'm going to vote with threat of withdrawing friendship or f f familiar love. You're not going to do that to me. Because at a certain point, if you're doing that to me, I may actually have been on the fence about Joe Biden. I am going to vote the opposite as a fuck you for trying to control me in that way. I think there's a lot of Americans like that that are just sick of it, getting sick of liberalism run amok, getting pushed on them. I would be saying the same thing about conservatism run amok if I felt that conservatives were jumping down my throat as an independent trying to, I don't have family members that are conservative. And I know this is anecdotal. I don't have family members that are conservative. They that say, if you vote for Joe Biden, we won't love you anymore. But I have family members that say, if you don't, if you vote Donald Trump, we're done. So it, it becomes at a point where it's like, I, I don't know how much I actually even want you in my life. If that's your attitude. Well, I shouldn't have to tolerate your you, you being a bigot. I'm not a bigot. Like I said, I'm an accepting dude. Come as you are. Black, white, Latino, transgender, Asian, whatever. Blue, purple. I just want to have a good time in life. I want to have fun. I want to have some laughs. You know, and I, I want to be able to be around people that objectively, if I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, I'm going to vote for this guy. I'm like, okay, well, I'm just curious as to why. Well, my main things are, look, under Biden, the deficit spending is going to increase even faster than it is under Trump. Uh, Biden has expressly said he's going to violate the Second Amendment and try to ban the sale of um, semi-automatic rifles. There's no such thing as an assault rifle. This reason, this reason, this reason. Oh, okay. Well, I never really thought about that. I was going to vote for Biden, and it was really on this thing, this thing, and this thing. And we're sitting there, we're like, hmm, that's interesting. You know, you haven't really swayed me. I think I'm going to vote for my guy. Okay, cool. Ends with a handshake. You guys start drinking beers, just having a good joke, laughing, exchanging ideas. But it, it it's not that way with liberals anymore. It's just not. Like I said about the Tampa Bay scene, 
Well, me and another guy, we're talking about how, you know, intolerant these people are around here for ideas different than their own. It's amazing. It, 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 it's one of those things where, you know, it's almost to the point now, if somebody does this to me, if somebody dares to do this to me, you're done as my friend. I mean, not that the people know me, but this is just what you should also do. If you're a person that's kind of in the middle, so you got friends that are both Republican and Democrat. If someone on the left to me says, well, why are you friends with that guy that voted for Donald Trump on Facebook? That's not cool, dude. I'm going to look at him and be like, listen, man, if you're going to hang, <clears throat> if you're going to hang around with people like that, I don't know that I want to be friends. I'm going to stop you right there. And what I'm going to say to you is, okay, we're done. What do you mean? Like, I'm cutting this off. I don't need this kind of negativity in my life. I have friends from all walks of life. Okay. I have transgender friends. Re in reality, I have transgender friends. Okay. Um, you're not going to bully me. I, I have gay friends who have actually said to me, well, why are you friends with this person? They're a Trump supporter. And I'm like, because I can accept ideas and viewpoints that are not exactly married to that are not exactly the same as mine and I'm not married to all my ideas. If there's one thing that the Rogan podcast taught me, it's that be open-minded as much as you can. If you present me with a new idea, I want to hear it out. Maybe it's for me, maybe it's not. But this is why in this long ramble here, this is why I think Donald Trump is going to win. Because I think the left would have won had they been rational and come out with a decent candidate, two decent candidates who sounded reasonable, Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang. Part of the reason that I'm voting for Trump is because the Democratic Party screwed over Andrew Yang and Tulsi Gabbard. That is actually one of the biggest reasons why I'm voting for Trump. If you want me to tell you the truth. I watched the way they railroaded Tulsi Gabbard, the Democratic Party, in favor of somebody they could control and that was bought and paid for, Camilla Harris. I saw them <clears throat> railroad Andrew Yang, who's this young entrepreneur with some interesting ideas. I saw them railroad him. And I was interested in what they had to say. And then the left, they pushed them out. Then they pushed back on it a little bit more with the censorship. A Hunter Biden article comes out. This is relevant to the president. This is a family member. And there seems to be some corruption on his level too. Twitter censors it. Facebook censors it in an, in an attempt to affect the outcome of the election. Again, the lefties again. You deciding what I can say and what information I can read. I'm not going to tolerate it. Open gun confiscation, which how realistic that is, I don't know. I really think... That even the Democratic Party is smart enough to know that you're going to get significant backlash. And the confiscation of firearms in this country would cause a civil war. I think they secretly know that in Washington. But it's just the rhetoric of the Democratic Party. Beta O'Rourke, hell yeah, we're going to take your gun. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, how are you going to take my firearm from me? You fucking limp-wristed pussy. Beta O'Rourke is not ever going to physically take my gun from me unless two savages are holding me down. Preferably not raping me at the time. But um, it's just the sum total of me just being tired of having you push your goddamn politics on me. To the point that you forced an independent voter 
over to the right. Because you ran such objectively bad candidates. You ran the two worst possible candidates. Camilla Harris, who is the most unlikable person to run for office since Hillary Clinton. And Joe Biden, who has senile. Who has senile. Who is senile. I should have said has dementia. The cognitive decline is showing in him. And this is why I think Trump's going to win. I think there is a resentment from the part of the population that has been told to dis- that their viewpoints are evil and outdated and that they just need to shut up and toe the line. You couple that with the failure of democratic cities to tackle the problem of rioting and looting, then falsely turn around and want to claim it's the fault of white supremacists. It seems like there is a damn white supremacist under every bed and in every closet in this country. White supremacy is everywhere. Just like communism back during the McCarthy era. That is, oh, whatever happens tomorrow, everything remains peaceful. And then afterwards, we all kind of just, this is how I'm going to be as a guy voting for Trump. If Biden wins, okay, Biden wins. You're not going to see, you're not, you're not going to see me out in the streets rioting and fighting over this. Even if it's a controversial decision Everybody chill out. We'll sort this thing out through talking to each other. So, all right. I'm going to call that my podcast for the evening because I'm tired. But um, good luck out there. If you listen to my podcast, vote for whoever you think is the right candidate. And I'm not judging you. I may not agree with you, but I'm not judging you. And I still want to hear your ideas on the subject. So thanks for listening.